expert on migration policies previously worked on the topic uh, with the EU. Thanks so much for joining me, Zoe. So this summit in Spain, the European political community clearly has migration this weekend uh, towards the this week towards the top of the agenda. Is the UK on the same page as the EU on this topic or are they slightly at odds with each other? Um, thank you for having me on. Yeah, it's it's an interesting combination of them being on the same page and that page being a page that puts them at odds. Because um, where there is a degree of unity across Europe and including the UK is in the continued dedication to the failed approach towards migration of trying to deter migrants by inflicting cruel and potentially deadly uh, policies towards them to try to stop migration from happening, which is unrealistic and unlikely. Um, so they're all more or less on the same page that that's the aim. Um, but Sorry, so that you think the that the EU as well as the UK are purposefully trying to do that? Or, or you're saying that's the result of failed policies? That's the result of their failed policies, but obviously that puts them all at odds with one another as well, because each country is engaged in this horrible race to the bottom on standards. So the UK, we can see us doing it all the time. We're saying people shouldn't be here. They should be staying somewhere else, possibly France. France would be fine as long as it's not here. So we'll make conditions really horrible here so that the people won't come here from France. Well, the French Again, they're in the same situation. They think the same should apply to them. So they think they'll make the situation as horrible as they possibly can in France. And then potentially people might stay in Italy. And the Italians, of course, are on the front line of this in terms of Europe. So what they're doing is trying to engage the rest of Europe in a, an agreement with Tunisia or with Libya or with Turkey. And they make these deals with uh, regimes over in those countries that are really undemocratic, that are really uh, perpetrated creating terrible abuses against the human rights of migrants in order to try to contain them ever further and ever further away. Um, and obviously it hasn't worked. Obviously it doesn't work for us to each try to push uh, migrants away to a different country. Obviously that will never work. So what we need to do is work together, but work together not to push people away, work together to share the benefits of migration, to plan for how we can share responsibility for protecting refugees and how we can make the benefits that protecting refugees can bring us um, be shared across all of our communities so that we is can there, build what we need. Is, is there a number that would have to limit that that would be effective? Um, what's the maximum number that a country like Britain, but, but perhaps you have numbers for, for the countries you mentioned, like France and Italy as well, that, that each can take and, and bring into their country in a, in a way that will work for the long term. Is there a limit to that or, or should it be sort of unlimited? I think that that's, I'm afraid to say, completely the wrong question. Because what we should be asking is why when there are people that we know are escaping from places like Afghanistan, from Syria, are we paying huge amounts of taxpayer money to countries like Tunisia, countries like Libya, countries like Turkey, to try to lock them up and push them back. Why are we allowing them to drown in the Mediterranean? 2,500 men, women and children have lost their lives in the Mediterranean just this year. And that's at least, that's what we know about. Why are we allowing that to happen? Those are the questions that actually go to the heart of this. What kind of a country are we? What kind of people are we? How do we I, treat I people? I totally understand that. Right and, to do that. But, but your He's suggestion was that we should, we should welcome migrants and, and, and make sure that their integration is, is successful and warm and friendly. And I, I totally get that. My, my follow-up question was, whether that is an unlimited approach or, or there is a realistic limit that has to be applied to it? Well, in terms of realism, actually what we have to do is accept the fact that we can't stop it from happening, right? There's one thing that defines us as human beings and that's that we have hope, right? So where people are in unlivable circumstances, as I say, Syria, Afghanistan, Iran, uh, places where they're being persecuted, where they're escaping from war, um, they will always find a way to escape. So if we engage with reality, that doesn't say, oh, we'll take 100 of you, or we'll take 200 of you, because the next person who has escaped from war and from persecution still needs a solution. So the reality of it is that we need to respond in a way that recognizes that we will need to take responsibility 
for people who need a safe home. And that across the whole of Europe, shared mm -hmm. responsibility and planned for is perfectly manageable. The numbers mm -hmm. we're talking about are not unmanageable, but we have created a crisis by mm -hmm. funneling the money into failed deterrence mechanisms instead of funneling that money into our mm -hmm. communities so that they are able to receive people. So 